In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the paintbrush tool, and we're also going to learn how to import an image into Illustrator. There are several ways to do it, um, but we'll look at two possibilities. So first, let's take a look at the paintbrush tool. So the paintbrush tool is right next to the pen tool, or sorry, the pencil tool, and it works very similarly to the pencil tool. Now, I'm going to give you a heads up. I am using a drawing tablet and pen right now. You can check these out in the Design Output Center. That's where the printers are on the fourth floor. You just need to bring your student ID so they can add you to the system and ask for a Wacom drawing tablet. Um, my drawing tablet is pretty simple. It doesn't do tilt. It just does pressure. Um, but these are, if you want to do hand-drawn illustration and illustrator, if you feel more comfortable working that way, this is a, it's a really great tool um, to do that because drawing with a mouse is pretty terrible. So let's start using the brush tool. So to start with, by default, the brush tool uses a three-point round brush, right? It's uniform in shape and size, and it allows you to draw a stroke like this. So by default, each time I draw a brush stroke, it's a new stroke. It does not leave the stroke selected, right? You know, this is what it does. So I'm going to hit Command A to select all or Control A if you're in Windows and delete this. However, the brush can be configured to work more like the pencil tool. So if I double click on the paintbrush again to get to the options, there's two options here. There's one, there's edit selected paths is already checkmarked. That means that if you select a path, whether it's a rectangle, ellipse, brush stroke, pencil stroke, whatever it was initially, you can edit it. Right? If, we check, if we also check mark keep selected, that means that when I'm drawing with the paintbrush tool, it's going to leave it selected. And then because I have edit selected paths also selected, I can come in here and make edits to this thing, right? I can right, do that. Now, something that, unlike the pencil tool where it does show you that you can, you can continue and end a path, you can do the same thing in the paintbrush tool. Um, it just doesn't show you. So you have to hover over the end here. I can pull this thing around, come over, and I have to be really careful and make sure I get right on top of that thing. And then it will join together and create a contiguous path. And again, I can continue to edit this if I want to. The paintbrush tool, unlike the pencil tool, has several options for how you can draw and what you can draw with. So these three brushes up here are what are called calligraphy brushes. And these long flat ones down here are called, called art brushes. And then this has a slightly different name and that has a slightly different name. So to start with, right, I can also grab a 10 point round. And because this is selected, it's automatically going to update it, right? Same old, same old. I can also do the five point flat. And so I can draw this and you'll see this is much, this is actually more like a calligraphy stroke. Um, this five point flat, if I make it, if I change this number of points here, right? So it's five point flat. Now it's actually five times four, right? I made it four point and it's five points. So it's 20 points wide at the widest point, which makes it a little bit easier to see what this does. Okay, so I can do the five point flat. Now I can also apply art brushes. And you guys may have already used these on different objects that you've made. So I can draw this and you can't really see that at one point. So I'm gonna make it six points and it becomes pretty obvious <laughs> how this works, right? And what the, the main difference between the between an art brush and a calligraphy brush is the calligraphy brush takes a single image, like say a circle, and it copies and pastes it on top of itself at a really, really close as you draw the brush, and it just copies and pastes that same one all the way along. And so that's how you get these, uh, the calligraphy strokes, whereas the art brush takes this entire thing and it treats it as a single image that it stretches along the entire stroke, right? So it's not overlapping it, it's just drawing it once. Now, there's also this three-point brush stroke here if I draw with this, you'll notice that, oh, brushes don't have to be solid. They can actually be transparent and have variations in their transparency. This opens up some really interesting options. 
You'll also maybe notice that as I'm drawing this, the harder I'm pressing on the, on the tablet, the more variation I'm getting in the size of the stroke, right? And so most of these brushes, if they have this brush icon, means they're already set to work with a tablet um, and paint like you would expect them to paint. Now this last one, the leather seam, this, I, I don't know why this exists. I have no idea why this is one of the defaults. It's just so ugly. I mean, I have seen some ugly things in my life, but this is really one of the worst things that has ever been created. I feel bad for everyone at Adobe Illustrator who had a part in making this horrible, horrible thing. <laughs> that being said, let's get rid of all of that stuff. And let's look at what we can change with these different brushes that we've got. So first, the calligraphy brushes offer us a lot of variation. All you have to do is double click on any one of these and let's start with the 10 point round because it's the easiest to see what's going on. If I double click on this, it's 10 point round, I could change its name because we're about to change it, that might be useful. We can adjust the angle, the roundness, and the size. The, so let's go ahead and adjust the roundness to start with. We can do that in two ways. We can either click on these dark dots in this little image here, or we can scale this slider up and down. Angle, again, we can also change here, or we can click and drag in here and change the angle. And then size, you do have to change here. And currently this is set to random, however, the variation is set to zero points, so it's not actually changing at all. Um, I could leave this at fixed. I'm gonna change it to pressure because um, that means that when I push down harder on my drawing tablet, it's going to change. And then I'm going to up this variation to, you know, the full, well, maybe 44 points, right? 45 points. So you can see this is the median, this is the maximum, and that's the minimum size that I'm going to get. So I can hit OK. And now when I draw with this, right, I can make these really fluid, nice strokes that if I draw really lightly, right? And my pen tool, honestly, like it just doesn't have the sensitivity to do that. I'd have to really um, set this to something lighter. It's also interesting to note that it's easier to do light strokes first. It's harder to continue the lightness at the end of a stroke, right? But so now I've got some variations I can really start to draw and make some interesting hand-drawn things, strokes that don't look like uniform and, and machine-made, even though they still, you know, clearly are vector graphics. It gives me a lot of freedom, oops, to do what I want to do. So I can do that with this. Now let's take a look at the other options. So we also have our art brushes. So let's double click on this art brush. Now this is just the charcoal pencil. I'm just going to leave it fixed. I want to set this to 100% and I'm going to say stretch to fit stroke length because I like to show you this, these two options first, both scale proportionally and stretch to fit stroke length. So first, right, if I come in here and I draw with this, it's what it's doing is it's stretching the stroke out the whole length, no matter how long this brush stroke is. So if I change this to six points, right, you'll see that if I draw a really short line, these, all of this stuff is smushed together, right? And if I draw a really long line, that's all stretched out, but it maintains the same width, right? This stroke, actually, this piece of artwork gets narrower as it goes from one end to the other, but it always maintains the same stroke width. Now, the other thing I can do is I can come in here, double click on this, and I can say scale proportionally, hit OK, leave strokes, and now what it does is if it's six points, right, and I go little tiny, it's gonna make it a smaller one, it's gonna make it a bigger one, but it's always gonna make it, right, the, the it's all gonna be the same smushedness. It's just gonna be either like a one point stroke or a six point stroke or a 10 or a 20 point stroke. So if I turn this back to one point, right, and make this the longer I draw it, the bigger it's gonna be, the shorter I draw it, the thinner it's gonna be, right? Okay. 
So, um, so then if I go ahead and change this to pressure, pull this down to 1%, pull this up to, well, not 600, that's a little bit crazy. How about three, almost 300%, three hit okay. Leave strokes. All right, so now if I press, I get a little bit bigger. Now this is one point, I'm gonna make this three or four points. That's gonna make it more noticeable when I go light versus when I go hard. Odd, that was weird. There we go. I must have been pressing on the side of my pen or something. All right, so I can go really soft and then really hard, and I can change this stroke weight much like you would with the other side, other tools, all right? So select all of this, delete it. Okay, so this is great, but we only have a few options here. Now, much like with the swatches, there's a library right here, and we can go down and there's bristle brushes, borders, artistic, etc., etc., etc. So if I go artistic ink, I'm going to have this window open up where I have several options available to me. Right, and I can choose any of these. There's some more splattery looking ones. Right, there's something that's a little bit more, oops, how did I not, there we go. Right, that's a little bit more um, uniform. You get a whole range of options here. And these up here, these are actually called scatter or uh, scatter brushes. They're light calligraphy brushes, but essentially they just stamp these little brush strokes all over the place, right? And each one is set to some different settings. Um, because these are included in Illustrator, you can't actually modify them, so you're kind of stuck with whatever they allow you to do. Um, in this window, there's these arrows, so I can actually go back and forth to different brush libraries and start to use some of these other guys, you know, zoomy brushes or whatever these are, scroll pens they call it. Right, so I can um, use these scroll pens. Now, once I've used a brush, the brushes I've used end up being added to my default menu here, right, for this artwork. So it keeps track of what I'm using and makes it readily accessible here so I don't have to go through all of these options to find it. We're gonna delete that. So what I'd like to show you now before we import an image and start drawing on top of it, is how to create your own brushes quickly. So, much like with the patterns, it's super simple. Um, we're gonna start by making an art brush. And to start with, we're gonna just use the line segment tool. And click on one point, hold down shift, select another point, and let's change the stroke width to 10 points so we can see what we're doing. And then we're gonna use the width tool, right? Which is right over here. And just start pulling out and pulling in certain parts so we get this stroke that starts to look you know somewhat blobby and 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 interesting all right okay so i've started modifying the stroke width you'll notice that it went from 10 points to 40 points let's go ahead and change this back down to one point now we're going to barely see any difference here but this is really important because what it does is it allows us to scale this up without it getting way too huge way too quickly, right? Um, if we just left it as it was, that would be the minimum size we could draw this brush stroke. And so we want to be able to start small and draw much larger. So now I need to use the selection tool. And adding a brush stroke is really easy. I could either add it up here to the brush definition or, which it, this is much more preferable. There is also a brush panel over here. If I click on my brushes panel, you'll see it has all the same things that have been used previously, but this time I'm gonna grab this object that I've made. I'm gonna drag it over here and I'm just gonna drop it in the window. And when I do that, I'm gonna get the option to make a new brush. I want to make an art brush, not a scatter brush. Click on this. And I'm going to leave everything exactly the same right now, except the colorization method. By default, it's only going to draw in black, right? That's all you're going to get. Or you can choose a key color and it will draw in whatever color that is. If you want to be able to adjust the color, you need to use tints. And I'm going to hit OK. And now if I use the brush tool, 
and make sure that I have selected this new brush that I've just drawn. By the way, it usually puts it at the bottom of the window, right? And so here's my art brush one that I created. I'm gonna, oop, I don't need to double click it. I just need to click it once. And now if I start painting with this, right, I've created my own brush. Now, again, because it's so thin, it's hard to see at one point, but let's go ahead and make this seven points. And you can begin to see that now I've got this brush that I've created. Now, art brushes, you don't need to just make them out of a single line or a single object. So I've got this brush that I've created, and you can actually make this, you can nest this in a sense. So I've got this brush that I've created, and I'm still drawing with it, so I'm going to use the letter B. But this time, and I want to put it back down to one point, but this time I'm going to make, I want to make something that looks really sketchy. And maybe it's going to be easier for me to draw vertically this time rather than horizontally. So I'm just going to go in here. Oh, and I have this set to edit um, the brush stroke, right, and to keep it selected. So I'm actually going to change that because since I'm doing a lot of really close brush strokes, I want to uncheck keep selected. This is going to allow me to draw brush strokes over one another, right? And so I'm just going to draw this pretty long line of all these little brush strokes, right? Each one of these strokes actually has um, some width variation to it as well, which is really nice. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with this as my brush stroke. Now what I need to do is I'm going to select all of these strokes and apparently there's one little anchor point over here, so what I want to do, if that happened to you, delete that because that's going to mess us up entirely. Right? I want to make sure that my selection area is really close to, to the objects here. And I'm just going to scale this guy down so it's even skinnier. All right? Now, we're not going to be able to see much of what's going on here. But again, we want this to be as thin as possible when we make it a brush. So now I've got this brush stroke. I've scaled it down. And I'm ready to drag it in here and drop it in this window. Now I need to make sure I select an art brush, hit OK. And you'll notice that the arrow is pointing this way now. That means Illustrator is going to start drawing here, and it's going to draw in this direction. I could also flip it this way, or if I want to see something terrible, I can flip it this way, and I can change my colorization method to tints, and I can hit OK. And it looks really weird in here, right? This is the art brush that I'm doing. And you can see what happens if I have something selected and, and select it. I'm going to undo that real quick because maybe I want to edit this. I'm going to deselect everything. And then I'm going to use my grab my brush tool, grab the stroke. And as I draw this, I'm getting something totally crazy. This is not at all what I want to be drawing. And that's because I'm drawing across the grain. Now this can do some, right, if I just tap once, I get something similar. If I tap twice or three times, right, I'm starting to get this thing set up, right? But if I start to draw with this at all, it goes really nuts really fast. So I'm going to select most of these objects that I just slapped on the page and get rid of them. Right? And so if you ever are using an art brush or creating an art brush and this happens, let me go ahead and see if I can grab this. This is just one anchor point. You want to double click on it and you want to make sure the direction is set the way you want to draw. So if I hit OK now and use the paintbrush tool and double, make sure I click on this one more time to make sure I have it selected, right? Now it's drawing the way I want it to draw and I can change the stroke weight from something super tiny to five points, right? And you can start to see what I've done. Now again, I can change this to pressure as far as the width goes. I can change this down to 8% and maybe 400 or 300% hit OK, weave strokes. And right then I can, um, you know, make major changes. Obviously, sometimes this doesn't make sense to have this much variation. You usually want it to be a little bit less, um, but it depends on what you're doing. OK, so this is how you make an art brush. There's several other options that you've got. Um, you'll notice that this changed when I changed the way the arrow was moving across this. 
Again, we could scale proportionally. We could leave this fixed. Um, we could either colorize it or not. Um, we can also change, we can essentially mirror the stroke as well, or change how it overlaps on the corners. Um, all of those things are, are things you can, ex you can experiment with, but we don't need to cover right now. Okay, so let's look at how to make a scatter brush. That's the other type of brush that's really useful. That's like those ink spots that you were doing. And the scatter brush works the same way. We're going to make a rectangle scatter brush, right? So I'm just going to draw four rectangles of varying sizes. And I'm going to use my selection tool to rotate these guys a little bit. So they're not quite aligned with each other. And I'm actually going to make this one a little bit bigger and then rotate it and grab the center of this. And now I'm going to select all four of these. I'm going to change the stroke weight, or sorry, I'm going to change it so it has no stroke. And I'm going to change the fill color to black. Um, and then I'm going to adjust the opacity of all of these objects to about 50%. And now I'm going to overlap these objects a little bit. And once I have all four of them overlapped, I'm actually going to um, hold down Option and duplicate a couple of these and just um, send them you know, further away from the main blob. Right? It doesn't matter if I'm pulling these up off the artboard a little bit. Um, so now I'm going to select all of them. And again, I want to scale this down much like I did with the strokes because I want this to be small. The small, if I make something small, I can always scale it up. But if I make something large, I can't scale it down very easily. All right, so okay, so I've got all of these somewhat transparent blocks. I'm going to drag this guy in and, and drop it in here. And this time I do want to make a scatter brush. And now I've set the scatter brush. And let's just leave all the default settings except the colorization method. We'll change that to tints in case you guys want to experiment with a different color. I'm going to hit OK. And by default, all of the scatter brushes are going to be placed up top under the calligraphy brushes. So I'm going to make sure I have this selected. Oh, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select my brush tool first. Then I'm going to select this tool. And now, as I draw this, right, I get these transparent boxes that come all over the place, that show up all over the place. So I'm going to change the stroke weight, let's say, to six points. Right? And I've got my blocks. And you'll notice that the spacing, right, they're pretty well spaced out. They just stagger across the page. But they're even, they're all in a line. So if I double click on this, some of the options I have are, one, the size I can change. So I can say instead of fixed, let's deal with pressure because I have a pen with me. You can also do random. And I'm going to start this with 33. I'm going to make it 300% as the biggest one. Um, and then the spacing, let's reduce the spacing down as low as we can go. And you can see these start you can take the spacing down so much that they start to resemble um, an actual brush stroke, or you can make it just a little bit bigger. And depending on how much you have these overlapped, you can get some pretty interesting effects. Now the scatter right, is, says is fixed. We could do random, or again, we could do pressure. So I'm going to have two different things changing with pressure. And I'm going to have this scatter you know, go up and down a little bit. And that's just going to make the the stroke waver. I'm going to leave the current strokes. I'm going to make sure I click on this guy one more time just in case. All right? And so now all right, you can see they're all jumping all over the place based on how hard this pressure is. And I'm able to draw these different blobby things, right? So you can make this out of any shape, any object. Um, the only thing is it's going to draw in black and white, right? No matter what you do, it's going to draw in black and white um, unless you change the color, right? Unless you allow tints there. But you can't create multicolored artwork and then have the brush paint like something that's red, green, and blue all at the same time, right? That's not going to work. It has to be black and white. And with the black and white, white is tran equals transparent and black equals 100% opaque. 
So anything in there um, is going to determine whether it's opaque or transparent or how much that variation is. So this is how, to, how we can make our own custom brushes in Illustrator. It's pretty simple and straightforward. There's just several options that we have. Um, the biggest thing that people tend to forget is setting the colorization method to tints in order to allow you to change the brush stroke color. I'm going to go ahead and clear away all of these strokes. And now let's say that we want to take someone's portrait and we want to sketch on top of it in Illustrator. I'm going to link to a tutorial on the Blackboard page that really goes into depth on how to do drawing and illustration and it covers a two hour long drawing um, that this woman does and she's very talented. I am not an illustrator so please bear with me in the next few minutes. To bring in a JPEG or a PNG first we need to find an image so I'm going to go ahead and just do a search for face and images and I'm going to scroll down until I find a face that is interesting. I'm going to grab um, what's his name's face and I'm going to click on view image. If you just grab this it's a much lower resolution version where if you click view image you get the full res option. If I'm on the Mac and I right click on this I can actually copy the image and just paste it directly into Illustrator. If I'm not on the Mac um, I don't know how Windows handles this, honestly, with Windows 8 or Windows 10. Uh, but you can always go down to Save Image As, and I can put this in my downloads, or Online Assets is the folder that I'm currently using. I'm just going to say, sure, I'll leave it unnamed.jpg, and save it, and it's going to download it. So let's go back to Illustrator. Now, again, if you're on the Mac, you can always just hit Command-V now, and it'll actually, actually paste this image into Illustrator. If that's not working for you for whatever reason, and you have downloaded the image, you can go to File, and go down to Place. And once we've gone to Place, you go to Online Assets, or wherever your file is located, and I can scroll down to Unnamed, hit Place, and when I do this, I get this icon that pops up, and it's basically this, the corner, is the top right corner. So if I come up here and click, it's going to draw it right here. Now I can scale this image if I use my selection tool, not my paintbrush. All right, I can scale this image to whatever size I want it to be to fill the artboard. Um, in this case, sure, I want it to be bigger. You know, I don't care if it's low res. You can see a lot of pixelation here, but I'm going to be using this just as a template to draw on top of. And so, great, I've got this drawing. Now what I need to do is rather than have my drawing happen on the same layer as the image is on, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer to do the drawings on, and then I'm going to lock the lower layer so I don't accidentally select it or start drawing on it. Okay, and I want to make sure I'm still on layer two. And now I've created this nice um, brush, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my brushes panel. And I'm not going to use the scatter brush that I did. I'm actually going to go down and find this brush. And I'm going to do a test stroke really quick with the brush tool. Make sure I'm on here. That's all right. Um, what I really want to do, however, is I want to, I'm actually going to make this smaller because I want this to be really tiny. I'm going to make it 0.4 points. So depending on what size your, your brush is or how thick it draws at one point will determine what you want to do here, right? I want something that looks like that. So 0.4 is a pretty good stroke weight. When I start drawing on this, if his face is 100% opaque, it might make it a bit challenging for me to see what the heck I'm doing. So I might want to reduce the opacity of his face just a little bit. So I'm going to unlock this. So I'm going to select this linked file and I'm going to go to the appearance panel I could also go to transparency, which just gets me straight to this. And now I can make him a little bit softer. So now my strokes are going to stand out more strongly against this background. Right. So now I can go in and I can start, you know, maybe sketching some of the details on his face, right? I can come in here, you know, draw those lines. Maybe I can come in here under the edge of his nose, get that in there. Um, maybe squiggle in here a little bit to get some of these, right? 
And remember what I said earlier. Um, sometimes it's a lot better to just draw a bunch of little strokes. Um, in this case, it looks like the way I've got things set, and maybe I need to change some settings really quick on my brush. It looks like things are a little bit off. No, I have pressure set 8%. Maybe I can reduce this to something more sane, like 150%, and increase this to something more like 25%. Okay, leave strokes. All right. All right, so now I can come in here and I can have a little bit more control. I have like a minimum line width that's going to happen when I start really drawing with this face, right? And I can actually press harder and get bigger lines under here to start doing this. And right, I can come in, I can draw really lightly around his eyes to start with. And at this point, I'm going to continue to do this for a little while, and then I'm going to accelerate this so you guys don't have to sit through watching me do this 100% of the time, right? This is the basics. Now with his hair, I probably would have wanted to change the brush stroke. There's certain other areas, details I haven't quite included yet that I would want to do a much thinner line, change how the stroke looks, and there's absolutely no shading in use yet. And I might actually want, you know, this line to be here instead of down here. But whatever the case, let's go ahead and say this is good for the time being. And so now I just realized that all of that drawing happened on layer one because I had selected it as the last possible thing. But that's easy enough to fix. I can select this first path and scroll down through the hundreds of other paths I've got and hold down shift and grab everything but that linked file and put it into layer two. All right, so now I have layer two. I can turn off layer one and I can start to see the sketch that I've begun, right? Now this is the basics, this is the very beginning. Um, it looks pretty rough. I would change a lot of things. Um, about this and I would continue working on it. The point of the demo is to show you how you can import an image and then sketch on top of it and use it as a reference. A lot of people will actually hand draw work. They'll do pencils or whatever, like rough sketch something and then scan it in and continue to draw on top of that. Or they'll rough sketch something in Photoshop and then use Illustrator to come in and work on it later. So another drawing tool available to you is called the Blob Brush. And you get to the Blob Brush by hitting Shift-B. We're going to the icon below the Brush tool. It actually creates an object rather than a stroke. So if I come in here and I've got this, I'm going to create a new layer. I've just turned off the visibility on layer 2. I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to draw on this layer with the Blob Brush. So with the Blob Brush, I can come in, and right now my brush is huge. So I'm going to shrink the size of this brush. So with the blob brush, I have the stroke size set really, really tiny right now. So that I could, I can come in and I can draw really fine lines on his face. Right, and once I get these initial lines sketched in, and I'm actually going to zoom in here a little bit. 
his eye so I can have a little bit more fine-tuned control. Okay, so that all went by quickly, hopefully. Uh, and so now I can turn off the visibility of the layer one, and you can see that I'm starting to get a sketch. Is it any good if I make this invisible? Not really, I could spend many more hours fixing it and adjusting it and tweaking it and deleting things and erasing and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in order to make it better. But I also wanted to show you that in addition to doing lines with the blob brush, we can actually do larger like color fills as well. So again, I'm going to turn this on. Um, and what I'm going to do is create a new layer. I'm going to pull this down under our drawn layer. I'm going to lock the lines layer so I can start working on the colors. And yeah, so I'm going to get going with this. So I've neglected to color his ears, and obviously the whites of his eyes are actually peach colored, which means he probably has some horrible disease. But you can see that even with my limited illustrating skills, you can pretty quickly create 
painterly looking things. Now, the reason that it's nice to do this in Illustrator rather than Photoshop is that all of these things are different shapes that you can select, right? When you draw with a brush in Photoshop, it's just there forever unless you erase it, and then you have to have all these different layers, right? Whereas with this stuff, if I'm not happy with those highlights, if I want to reshape them or move them or delete them entirely, I can do that. If I want to, say, make a little bit of dark color around these lines on his forehead, Right, like I don't just want those lines there, I actually want a little bit of color. I should be able to grab all three of these and copy them and then relock this layer, come back to layer four and paste in front. So these are on layer four now and they're the top objects. So I can grab each one of these. I can just add strokes to it. So. I can say, let's add a stroke. We'll start with something horrible and we'll make it four point. So I've got the stroke, it's bright green right now. I'd like it to be the same brown as some of these shadows on his face. And I need to make this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and make it four points. I don't know if it's got rounded corners or what the corner situation is here. Um, I'm just gonna leave it as it is though for now and so I've got this set like this. I can use the eyedropper tool, but this time instead of using it like we've been using it, which is to just hold down, just to click on something, which would give us all of the details, right? So this has no stroke and the fill's a certain color. I'm gonna undo that. If I hold down shift, it's gonna grab the actual color from the screen, right? So if I hold down shift and click on this, now that stroke has been colored brown, and I can do the same thing for these other two. And actually I can hold down shift, select both of them, set the stroke weight to three, and the color is already selected so I don't have to do anything more. All right, so now I zoom out, right? And so this makes this a lot easier to work with. I could do the same thing. I could add some color around many of these different strokes.